Stuart, it's very nice to be back in this magnificent place, you know, the debating chamber of Oxford Union. Congratulations on your election as the Oxford Union. Thank you. What are your personal highlights of term events? Mm. So we're only just just in really the beginning of term, just in the third week now. So um, we've had some, for me, personal highlights. So welcoming Harry Redknapp to the union. So ex-Tottenham manager was a big, big thing for me personally. Um, but later in term, we have some events ranging from the very serious. So we have several heads of state or former heads of state um, and premiers of government. So we've got the prime ministers of Kosovo, former prime minister of Portugal. Wow. And tonight, in fact, we're welcoming the uh, crown prince of Liechtenstein. So several heads of state. Wow. So very much looking forward to that. But uh, we're also hosting um, some, some slightly less serious events. So Mary Berry, uh, the great British Bake Off, mm -hmm. uh, Mark Hamill, most famous for playing Luke Skywalker, um, and Shia LaBeouf, um, which should be an interesting one, to say the least. I really enjoy the recent China debate. Can you tell us a bit more about it? Yes, of course. So uh, recently we had a debate um, that was this house would sacrifice trade with China in protest of human rights abuses. And um, it was uh, one of our most popular debates of term. We had a packed chamber here, so people kind of hanging from the rafters. And um, the, the issue was, was debated over what our relationship, as in our relationship, this country's relationship would be with China moving forward. It's a topical issue not only with China, but also recently with Iran and Saudi Arabia. But China is by far and away um, the, the most significant trade partner we have in terms of volume. Um, and, and as a result, it poses a very interesting question over how we define our international relationships and what we are prepared, if indeed we are prepared to sacrifice anything um, in, in protests or in solidarity with um, human rights abuses and those who are suffering from human rights abuses. You are studying English language and literature. Mm. Who are your favourite authors and poets? Um, always a very difficult question to ask someone who's uh, studying English literature. Um, but I would have to say my favourite writer of all time is Percy Shelley. In an almost childish way, I'm not quite sure what it is. Um, I suppose I should know by the end of my degree. But there's just something about reading his poetry that um, it, it, always, it always moves me. And that, that's essentially what writing is meant to do. Um, it's meant to have an impact upon the people who are reading it in some shape or form. Um, in terms of prose writers, so Thomas Hardy would probably be my favourite prose writer. Uh, he, he, interestingly enough, writes often about Oxford and the, what he would call Wessex, so the general um, kind of southwest area of England. Um, and, and that for me is, is fascinating. The way he writes is it's so powerful. It's, you really get to know all the characters that he's writing about um, in, in such a unique way. Um, and in particular, Jude the Obscure, which is about the difficulties of trying to get into Oxford, um, is something that a lot of people can, can relate to who sit in this chamber on a weekly basis. Many famous global leaders have been involved with the running of the Oxford Union. Mm. Is there anyone who you look up to? Mm. Um, so it's, uh, it's very difficult to whittle down from all the leaders we've, we've had here come through our, our chamber. Um, uh, I, I'd say there would be two who are perhaps most well known. Uh, one would be William Gladstone, whose bust is, is over there. Um, one of the most famous British Prime Ministers ever um, and perhaps the most significant president of the Oxford Union changing the society, you know, really getting down to what the society is all about, which is free speech and debate when he was president in 1830. Um, and uh, perhaps more globally well known would be Benazir Bhutto, whose uh, painting is just over there, um, who actually, I believe she ran three times for president, so she lost the first two times, if, if um, my, my knowledge is correct, um, and then eventually won third time. Um, so I think it's fair to say even when she was in her early 20s, she was very focused and driven and, and knew where she wanted to go. Um, so yeah, I, I certainly admire that dedication. I can still remember her here in this room. I attended that event when I was a DPhil student at Exeter College, University of Oxford. She asked her friend, what's the secret of your success? And he said, by making the right decision. How do you make the right decision? By making wrong decisions. Mm. Does it make sense to you? Yes, it does, it does. And um, 
you know, we had something similar when Anna Wintour came to speak. She said the most important thing uh, that can happen to anyone if they want to be successful is to fail and to be fired. Mm. Um, so that gives us all courage. I mean, we've all failed at certain things. I, I've certainly failed at many things. Um, and it's always about how you pick yourself up and carry on. How do face-to-face -face Oxford Union debates compare with the social media and the internet? Um, there really isn't any comparison. Um, when people debate over social media and over the internet, um, it's not really debating. It's they, they are just trying to score points. It's what I would call keyboard warrior. Mm. Uh, it's very easy to say something behind your screen when you're halfway around the world from somewhere out, from someone else just typing on your keyboard. Whereas here, uh, you know, in, in the Oxford Union, you, you are facing mm. the people. You are mm. debating. You have to look them in the a eye. A bit like a parliament. Well, exactly. <laughs> you're, you're looking them in the eye and you're telling them yeah. why they're wrong. Mm. And that takes courage. Um, and it's a very difficult thing. And obviously something which should be respected a lot more. Um, I, I don't respect anyone who debates solely over the internet. Mm. Um, mm. I, I view that as weak. Mm -hmm. um, but if you come into the Oxford Union and you not only face the people you're debating, but you stand in a room uh, of 450, 500 people, then that, that is real courage. And uh, interactive. And you interact, yeah, exactly. Yeah. If, you're, if you're discussing ideas over mm. the internet, mm. and discussing ideas is perhaps um, being too kind to what's actually happening, mm. um, then you don't have to take anyone, other's, anyone else's point. You can just ignore them. Mm. Whereas in the Union, if someone stands up, and they say you know, something like point of information or they want to challenge you. And yes, of course, you can tell them to sit down, but it would look very odd. You should always try and take the points of information if you can to show that your argument is robust and show that you have a total mm. uh, grip of what you're talking about. Mm. And that's much, much more mm. impressive and significant. Thank you very much Thank for you very being much with for us, in. Voices from Not Oxford. Sure. Thank, Thank you very you. much.